Wallace. Wallace the jewel of human civilization is now a barren wasteland. The planet Sinaitis is scarred by centuries of conflict and neglect. But beneath the red silence lies a secret that can change the course of the galaxy. The Adeptus of Heaven. The tech priests of Mars have long sought to unlock the secrets of the universe. They delve into forbidden knowledge and ancient technology in their quest for power and light. But their obsession has come at the terrible cost. The fabric of reality is fraying at the edges. The forces of chaos are closing in. Will they be able to save humanity from its own hubris? Or will they be consumed by their own ambition? Hey everyone, my name's Ben, welcome to the mini painting page and today we're going to take a little bit of time to look over a base that is suitable mainly for sci-fi. However, with a few creative twists, it can also be suitable for fantasy as well. We are going to be looking at Mars themed bases, or I guess red planet bases in general. And we're going to make sure that it's quick, simple and efficient so that it is of a decent tabletop quality that we can mount our models in a quick order and get out onto the field and start playing some games. So let's not waste any more time and get to what we need to do to get started. So starting off, we are going to be wanting a base of some form of a suitable size for the miniature that we're planning to mount on it. Some form of rock, this could be cork, but here I'm actually going to be using slate for a flatter profile of the base. We will also need some form of texture paste. Here I'm using a sand texture paste, though you could make an equivalent form of this at home with some sand and some PVA if you can't get this item specifically. And finally, we are going to also need some super glue to lock everything down and some sandpaper to help make everything flush and bond well. Do bear in mind that you can swap essentially any of these products out for alternate products, but naturally there may be some form of variance given the fact that the products aren't identical. Anyway, disclaimers aside, we can move on to the building of the base. And here we want to start by applying a medium thickness layer of the texture paste across the entirety of the base. This should help to make sure that the texture is consistent across the whole base itself and we won't have any large or small areas that don't match the overall sandy texture that we're going for. Once this is applied we can look at adding the rocks. So here we want to take our chosen rocks whether it's cork, slate or other natural forms and sand the base of these pieces. This should help to make sure that there is a flush mounting point for the rocks to the base itself as well as giving us an opportunity to change the orientation of the rocks by sanding what part will be attached to the base itself. With these flush bottoms sorted, we can apply a little bit of super glue and push these rocks into our chosen positions of the base. When doing this, it's worth bearing in mind that the model that we will be placing on needs to be mounted somewhere. So decide if they will be on the sand area or on the rocks itself and make sure you leave foot placement space for the model to go in. This is where I would suggest if you have the model built and not painted, you can take the time to imprint footprints so that you know the exact placement that you're going for. After this, we should be see that around the rocks that we've just mounted, because of the flat bases that we sanded earlier, the paste should have evenly been pushed out from under the rocks and start to be beading around the edges. We can then take an older brush that we care little for and start to shape this texture paste and blend it into the rocks. I would advise pulling the beaded gel onto the surface of the rocks and into the rest of the gel as what this will do is make the rocks look more embedded into the base itself as opposed to just a rock being stuck on a base clearly and evidently. With the rocks done we can now move over to the rest of the paste on the base and here I wanted to demonstrate the erosion of wind on Mars or on a desert if we're going the fantasy route. And to do this, we're going to pick a specific direction and start pulling the brush through the texture paste to create channels. If you are using a homemade version of this texture paste by mixing PVA and sand, you will need to make sure that you have a ratio that is going to be thick enough to hold up to these patterns and not just loop back into the channels that you've made. So we want to take a little time and get that to look all beautiful and how we want it and then we need to let it dry. Once the texture paste and rocks are dry, we have the opportunity to review the base and decide if we want to add any more texture. This could be a new texture to the base, such as a crackle medium or basing sand. But here we're just going to add another layer of the texture paste 
to hopefully add additional depth to the base by repeating exactly the same steps that we've just completed. And then what we want to do once again is leave the base to dry. Once it is, providing we're happy with the overall look at this stage, we can move over to the painting. So today we're going to be looking at painting this in a Mars sci-fi theme. So you follow along if you want to do that. However, you could also go for a desert base if you wanted to go down the fantasy route. And then you can follow the same steps except swapping out the colors but the overall process itself is the same. If you do want a specific video around desert basing and color schemes for that, please let me know down in the comments below and I can look at making that video for you. As with most of my painting projects, I am going to be starting off with a full coverage of a Chaos Black spray base coat, followed up with a white spray from above. And once this is dry, we can move over to the actual painting. So we're going to be taking a dark reddish brown and cover the entirety of the base making sure that we get all of the rocks, sand, channels, and any additional textures that we've added to the base up until this point. This should give us a consistent color base to work from as we go and add additional layers later on. Now, we may need to do a couple of coats for this depending on the particular color we're doing, but we just wanna go through, make sure that we get that consistent base coat over the whole area. And the reason that we did the white zenithal spray from above is hopefully we should be able to get a cleaner, brighter color rather than working from a black complete based coat. Now I mentioned stippling, so let's go over to that fun stage. And here you're going to want either a stippling brush or a sponge or sponge on a stick. And we want to get a slightly lighter reddish brown color for the stippling action. So here we want to take that color and then stipple it all across the base. This should mainly catch the higher areas while also catching some of the lower areas in a more random fashion and hopefully and ideally give us a nice random minor change across the entire base in color. Depending on the jump in color for the ones you've chosen between your base coat and your highlight, there may be a need to do a couple passes of this to get a clear noticeable change but we just want to do a couple of passes until we can get a nice color variance and mottling effect on the base. Don't worry, the next step will be a little bit brighter in color and we will see a greater change in that step. So that will be coming up. Wait, wait for it. Now, so let's move over to the next layer. And again, we're going to want to stipple or sponge this color. This is going to be an orange brown that we're using which when we apply, we should see a bigger change than the last stage. But as before, we're going to want to work over the base, stippling this orange brown across the base in a random fashion. Once dry, we should see a nice variance of color across the entirety of the base, from the original brown color we've used as a base up to this brightest orange. With this achieved, we can go on and take a light cream or a pale flesh tone and start to dry brush this across the entirety of the base, catching the highest raised areas of the rocks and the texture paste. And by doing this, we should see the full array of textures across the base that we've spent our time creating up until this point. Okay, so cards on the table. This next step may not be 100% essential. I gave it a go and it was more of a theory test and the intention behind it was to push the base more to a brighter orange the more stereotypical color that you see on a base without making it just a riser rust orangey color overall. So bear that in mind, but if you are happy with the base that you've got at this stage, just completely avoid this and skip this step. However, if you like how it looks afterwards and you think it's worth a try, feel free to follow along. To do this, what we're going to want to do is take a orange ink or orange wash color and then mix in a brighter orange tone to push that contrast on the base. What we want to do is mix them together so that we do get a relatively thin wash like consistency out of this paint. In theory, you could also use something like contrast paint. Just make sure you put on a thick enough coat so it doesn't dry before we go back to mopping it up, which we'll touch on in a moment. So we want to make sure that we get an entire coverage over the whole base in a nice thick coat. Then once we've done that, we can clean off our brush and come back and start to mop up all of the wet areas and overly saturated areas on the base. This means that we do get to control the overall tone on the base and where this is. Essentially what we're doing is painting in reverse. So wherever we're mopping up paint from, there's going to be less color in that area. 
However, the intention is that the overall tone will still be slightly marred by this wash. It will just be a not deep color compared to the areas you don't pull as much wash from. So that's the theory behind it. As I said, feel free to try it if you want to. Once this is done and we're happy with the overall placement and the puddles essentially and pulling off the paint from where we don't want it, we can move over to the next step, which is going to be a mix of flesh tone with the brighter orange paint that we mixed in from a moment ago. This should give us a nice mixed color, which is kind of a desaturated orange, which should blend nicely with the washes we've just done, as well as highlighting the base in a nice natural earthy style that should remain harmonious with the rest of the base and all the steps that we've already done. So we want to take this desaturated orange mix and dry brush it all across the base, catching all the highest areas and preserving our past work. So this is where we'll be catching the top of the rocks and the top of the erosion ridges that we've made in our base so far. As a final touch, I am going to add down a layer of matte varnish once this dry brush is completed and fully dried. And that should knock back all of the shine from the base and the previous steps and help to add that dry barren feel of a Martian plain or if we painted it as a desert, as a desert base. And that is essentially it. Next steps, all you want to do is take your favorite jet black paint, cover the base rim and you can mount a model and send it across into the battlefields. This is hopefully a nice base that you can do and replicate on a large scale. So we could do an entire army quite easily and quite efficiently and making sure that it is interesting and will help your model shine rather than being overly saturated and detracting from the overall miniature. So if you aren't quite ready to jump onto the painting table and make a base just yet, why not check out this video here? Remember to subscribe and until I see you next time, have a good one and goodbye.